Hello everyone. Today I am going to give a small example about how to configure context-based access control. Uh, in the simulated network that I designed using Cisco Packet Tracer, I created two segments. The first segment is internal network and the second segment is the outside network. In the internal network, I have two hosts, host one and host two, each one with its respective IP address. In the outside network, I have four servers. So the first server is DNS server, hosted on server 192.168.0.1. The second server is server HTTP server and secure HTTP on server 192.168.0.2. The third server is for SMTP and POP3 services, hosted on uh, machine 192.168.3.0.3. And the fourth server or service is FTP, hosted on machine 192.168.0.4. Now, uh, host one, host two should be able to access any one of these four services on the outside network, but the access is going to be controlled by the router, which is in between. And the router here is playing the role of a filter. You can put it as a, you can consider it also as a firewall. It has two fast Ethernet interfaces. One interface, fast Ethernet 00, zero is connected to the internal network. The second interface, fast Ethernet 0 slash 1, is connected to the outside network. Now, of course, uh, from host one and host two, I'd like to access each one of these four servers using FQDN. For that, uh, it was very important to uh, define a domain name. In my case, it's mytest.net. And this is take the, I, this uh, service here is uh, taken care by the DNS uh, server. So the, the DNS server is the one in charge of resolving all host names into their uh, of different services of the machine where different services are residing into their equivalent IP address such that from host one you will be able to access the web server secure web server emails FTP simply by using the FQDN of the machines where the services are running now when it comes to, to the context-based access control actually uh, it's a feature uh, which is available on Cisco routers and it allows to specify actually what traffic needs to be allowed through the router and what traffic needs to be left also outside to go out of the router outside the router okay, the uh, control base access control inspect the traffic it inspects the traffic that you specify and this inspection will make sure that the traffic is not tempered with so you want to avoid anyone to temper with the traffic to make sure that this situation does not come, does not arise. So better use control-based access control. So this is the job, the main job of this kind of uh, protocol or uh, let's say uh, feature available on Cisco routers. Not only that, the control-based access control will dynamically add entries at the top of the access control list, if any exists on the router. And for sure that you're going to have many access lists configured on the router, if it plays the role of a firewall or a filter, and these dynamic uh, entries are going to allow the returning traffic. For example, host one access the web server or the email server or FTP server, right? Now, it's very important that when you configure the context-based access control to that the returning traffic is allowed. Otherwise, it will be a problem. You can send the traffic to any one of these servers, but the returning traffic will be blocked at the router. We don't want that. so. Among the features allowed by the context-based access control is to allow the returning traffic from the, uh, from the destination. And this is done because dynamic entries in the access list are added. Now uh, we talk about how to configure that. I go to the router. Okay, let me just position the window such that the configuration will be clear. Now I go to enable mode or the privileged mode to, to display the running configuration. This is running configuration. And here you see that I am defining my context-based access control rules. I use the command IP inspect name. Then I specify the name of my control-based access control. And I specify HTTP. What does this mean? It means that uh, HTTP traffic is going to be inspected. Also, tenant traffic needs to be inspected. Now, for the Cisco packet tracer that I have in hand, at hand, uh, does not 
have uh, extra possibility or options to specify other protocols. So for example, if I want to allow DNS, DNS is not here, so I just use UDP. Like this, UDP traffic is going to be inspected, and since DNS is based on UDP a transport layer, it will be also uh, inspected and allowed to go through the router. Same thing for TCP. Um, we don't have the option of POP and SMTP protocols in the control based access control in uh, Cisco Packet Tracer, so I'm going to content myself to uh, to use TCP protocol instead of the uh, relevant protocol. But in real routers, real iOS, of course, you are going to find options about how to add SMTP and POP3. Now, what I do, I'm going to apply this context-based access control to the fast Ethernet interface or uh, of the router, fast Ethernet interface 0 slash 0 of router RT in the inbound direction. So this will be applied to this interface in the inbound direction. Now, again, since I don't have the option to specify ICMP protocol, I have to create a rule. And this rule will say that all the ICMP traffic should be allowed. The eco reply should be allowed from destination to um, from the destination to the sender. So the rule, the access list 101 is here. Now what we do, we apply the access control, the extended access control list that is uh, defined here. We apply it in the inbound direction at the fast Ethernet interface 0 slash 1. Okay, so far everything is okay. Now I go to host 1. Let me just reposition my window, desktop, web browser. Now I will put the address HTTP. Uh, I'd like to access my website, w.mytest.net. You see, now I was able to access the web server on the outside network. Uh, for example, I want to use the secure HTTP and see if it works, right? It's working fine. Uh, I can also send emails. For example, I can create an email. So to the second computer, I created, I already created an email account, stu at my test. This is a domain name. And here I write, um, this is example one. This example is about context-based access control. I send it, right? I send it. Now, I go to the second host desktop. Let me just resize the window for things to appear clear. Email, receive. Did I receive it? Yes, I received this email. This example is about context-based access control. Uh, the same thing from here. I'm, I can launch the browser. And using the browser, I can access the web server, the website on the web server, mytest.net, right? It works fine. Now, let's go to the router RT and see what happens there. In the router, I'm going to type show IP inspect or show, show IP inspect name name uh, well I have to type my C back so it gives me some uh, information about basic uh, tuning or the default tuning now instead of that I would like I'm interested to see the sessions what are the sessions which have been accepted so I will see there is one session open between computer host 172.16.0.1 to 192.168.0.2 and this session is meant for the HTTP server. I can also view some configuration for example uh, what does it say here? It says that uh, the context-based access control has been configured on the fast Ethernet 00. Um, now this has been configured in the uh, inbound direction Okay, outgoing inspection, but inbound access is not set. 
inbound, yes, it is here. Inbound inspection rule is my context based access control. And it shows the established session. Uh, we can type question mark to see all the possibilities, all the options also available, like statistics. But of course, the um, context based access control implementation on Cisco Packet Tracer is limited. I mean, it's not like a real uh, Cisco router. Uh, that's why you don't have access to so many uh, information and statistics which are normally displayed when you type this, uh, when you type show command, show IP inspect command. But at least it gives a basic and small example about how to configure this kind of uh, control list to control your traffic from one network to another one. So context-based access control can really well play the role of, uh, can configure a router as a firewall to control the traffic from one direction to another direction. This is Hakim Adish. Thanks for viewing this example. See you next time. Bye.